And so this practice of imagining the future is all about asking people to stop, pause, and ask themselves this really important question. But when I started to ask people to do this, what I quickly realized was you can ask someone to imagine what they want in the future and they'll give you all nice, you know, words about it, but it it will be meaningless if they don't put down the thinking hat and pick up the imagination hat instead. Basically, mm. if you're stuck in long-term conflict, you've probably tried many times to figure out, you know, a creative solution, right? Especially because this win-win negotiation methodology has been around for four decades. So most people do know about it and have been trained in how to use it, or many people, particularly in the kinds of business contexts that I think many of your listeners are coming from, you know, they have been trained in this kind of way of thinking. And so if those kinds of thinking of creative problem solving could have solved their dilemma, their conflict, it probably would have done so a long time ago, right? So we, and it's not worked. So we want to ask you to put down your rational thinking brain and engage your imagination instead. And the best way that I know how to engage our imagination is to make it really concrete, actually, by using our five senses plus our emotions to imagine what the future could be like. And the, if you watch Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, it is unbelievable the way that he uses language to help us imagine the future that he wants for us by using the senses of sight, sound, touch. He talks about um, the, you know, the, the valleys and the mountaintops. Um, hmm. He talks about quicksand. And then um, hearing the ringing bells of freedom, so you can feel that quicksand that you might be sinking into, but then you can hear those bells of freedom ringing. Um, and so that imagery, that's such a great um, concrete example that he provides for us of what we can do for ourselves. So I encourage us all to be our own Martin Luther King Jr. and imagine what would it look like then? What would it sound like then? What would it feel like then? So, for example, I've had clients say to me, you know, I can imagine taking out, uh, going out for dinner with this person who I work with, who I've been in serious conflict with, and I can smell the wine that we would be drinking, and I can taste the food, and I can smell it coming out of the kitchen from the restaurant that we're going to be in, and I can really imagine the good feelings that I will have from connecting with this person in a, in a different way than we have been over the last many months.